We had a fun time last night flying around with Jack Wiegand. Check that out if you missed it. He was the youngest person to fly solo around the world before I was. Now today we're going to go fly over to Spruce Creek. It's a cool little fly-in, private fly-in community. Here golf con. I came to and uh, Thank you. grab lunch with some people, oh. fly Bobby Breeden up to golf. Georgia, and then uh, head up to North the Carolina, Carolina meet Chris Palmer yeah, yeah. for uh, some we're barbecue, golf. and then head back to Lawrence. Okay, lights are on trip, so we take off. Health flaps are open, the flaps are good. Props will forward. Go in with the mixture, we get on the runway in here. Okay, there's the mixture. And we'll come in with the prop to help us turn. There we go. Some nice left turning tendencies. Pull the nose off just slightly, and we'll glide right on off. Okay, so we're off this with Sarasota, Florida. Now we're going into Spruce Creek, which is basically by Daytona Beach, just southwest of Daytona Beach. November the Identify we're going to, the airport we're going to is 7 Foxtrot uh, Lima 6. It's a huge flying community, really cool. Uh, you, it was a World War II naval base, I think it was built in. That's affirmative, we'll go on course, and I'm probably you. It was a naval base built in, or opened in 1943 during World War II, and uh, okay. just lost the alternator. So it's this really cool fly-in community. It was a naval base in World War II uh, for like training and stuff, and now it's this fly-in community with like, I want to say a few thousand residents, and like just tons of homes and airplanes, it's just like miles of taxiways. And they've got this 4,000 foot runway, they've got an RNAV approach, all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, so today's gonna be a pretty fun, long day of flying. You know, going into some really cool airports, Spruce Creek. Uh, then I'm gonna drop Bobby off at this uh, little private grass strip on a private island in uh, Georgia. And then fly up to this cool airport with a good barbecue restaurant, apparently, up in North Carolina, meet Chris Palmer up there. Angle of attack. If you haven't seen his stuff, check it out. Uh, he's doing some. He's getting the CF double I up there. So just and then up to Lawrence. So just lots of fun today. Spruce Creek traffic. Any of this? And there's a mop short final runway six. Spruce Creek. Traffic. Eleven o'clock. High. One mile. The restaurant's right up here, and we gotta go around the corner to uh, transient parking. It's so cool how busy this is. Like, there's so many, so much activity, so many people. Really cool. All these houses have like a road on one side and then a taxiway on the other side, which is just insanely cool. So you, you know, drive up to your house on this side, get in your hangar and go fly. Just land. All right, we'll land. We'll land towards the house. We'll do a. We'll clear the horses and 
All right, see you in an hour. Bye. Spruce Creek traffic, Bonanza 7 Hotel Bob. This is a big tree taxiing runway 24, Spruce Creek. Yeah, so this place is pretty cool. Um, I mean, pretty cool is an understatement, really. It's got, what, yeah. 1,600 houses here, about 800 airplanes, just a ton of, of really, really cool stuff. Yeah, I mean, this is really the lifeblood of general aviation here. Everybody lives it, breathes it, does it every day. Um, people move here because they love airplanes and they love flying for fun. The weather's generally good, uh, just by nature of being Florida. And so I guess it is open to the public as in so much as like you can fly in to go to the restaurant. Yeah, right? that's correct. So it says private, um, but that really means that they don't want people doing any commercial operations out of here. Four, Bravo, Romeo, downwind, two, four, right here. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah. You'll follow this line to the right. Uh, they don't want, you know, flight instructors coming here and doing touch and goes with their students. Unless they live here, of course, and that's 100% acceptable. Doing their, There's a private GPS approach uh, into here. And I guess if you do fly in, go to the website, it's just the identifier 7fl6.com and they've got all kinds of info on the procedures because you'll, you'll probably want to look at a taxi diagram at least just to figure out like where transient yeah. parking is and stuff like that. Yeah, there are... Uh, there's an awful lot of taxiways. Oh, there, there is a lot. There are 450 hangar homes that are integrated into the taxiways. So all of the the taxiways and the roads, they, they mesh like this. So in front of their house will be a road where you park your car and the back of your house will be the taxiway where you pull out of the hangar. Spruce Creek traffic, Bonanza 34, Bravo, Romeo, base 24, Spruce Creek. See, now that sign says 92. And that's what you're on? That's what I have. Okay. The chart says 97. Yeah, we'll go with 92. So I'll monitor 97 too. I guess they just changed the uh, CTAF frequency a couple months ago, so nobody's quite sure what the right one is. There, he's pulling off. Okay. Final's clear. Spruce Creek traffic, Bonanza 7 Hotel Pampas, departing runway 24, Spruce Creek. That's so cool. This is all Spruce Creek down here. Yeah. Yeah, first Bonanza 367 Hotel Pump is uh, just off Spruce Creek, like the uh, short, uh, short line northbound. 7 Hotel Pump, uh, B36, what's your request at altitude, and do you want to coast to the Charlie or flight following? Um, I guess we'd, we'd like both, but uh, we'd like to go up to 6500. We're currently at 1100, just over the shoreline above the uh, banner, so. Roger, I see you there. Uh, continue uh, northeast, but if you can, offshore just a little bit for our departure quarter to Daytona. What's your destination? And um, you said you want 6500. Three traffic, Bonanza 3. Uh, 7 Hotel Pump, that's a firm. And what's the nearest airport? Yeah, 3 3. Uh, Fernandina Beach. And we're headed up towards Fernandina Beach, 7 Hotel Pump. Yeah, so where are we going? It's like this little uncharted grass airport on a private island in Georgia. That's that's correct, mostly correct. The, uh, the island used to be all private. It's since become like 99% of it is a national park now, uh, Cumberland Island. But, you know, friends have property on there with a, a grass runway, 3,300 foot private runway. Uh, runs, it's in the center of the island, runs mostly east west. You know, good, firm, ground, a little bit sandy, as I was saying, but uh, so whenever we land, there are wild horses on the island. I, last I heard, there was about, uh, I think, I may be wrong, but I think 200 wild horses on the island, and they roam everywhere, up and down this 12-mile long island. There's, you know, there's no fences anywhere on the island, so this is the only field, so sometimes they will congregate in the field. Um, but so what we have to do is we have to do a low approach to clear the horses, and get them out of the way. Uh, this has to be done every single time you land. Even if you took off five minutes ago, you still have to do it. Um, and but the thing about the horses is you pretty much always expect them to go whichever way they're appointed. So if they're on the right side of the runway, but they're facing the runway, be prepared for them to run across the runway. So um, that is one of the more interesting things about this place. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's fun.
And I guess also I should just introduce you. Sure. So sure. Uh, so this is Bobby Breed. I'll he's, take off my glasses here. He's, uh, he's kind of known for doing some pretty fun stuff in an airplane up in Alaska. Like short field stuff, glaciers, uh, all, all kinds of really, the, the, the really cool kind of flying that you can find up in Alaska. Uh, now he's an airline pilot. Yep. Yep. Uh, and I don't know what else. Uh, I grew up flying out of my front yard with my dad. He had a Piper Super Cub he bought the year I was born. And just, you know, grew up with it and uh, eventually started flying in Alaska with him. Uh, he taught me how to, you know, fly off airport, landing on glaciers, mountains, gravel bars, beaches, everything. You know, we have the big 35-inch bush wheels, and it's really the only way to explore the state is via airplane, because there's no way to drive around that stuff. You can't really hike it. You know, there's a saying up there, just fly an hour or walk a week. So, airplanes are the means of transportation in Alaska. Uh, so, event, you know, I did some competitions up there, the uh, Valdez short takeoff and landing competition. I won that five times. We have the record in two different classes for shortest takeoff and landing combined. Uh, and then I started teaching. I had a, uh, was working for a company that had a contract with the military teaching uh, Army pilots how to identify off airport landing zones and fly in the mountains. Really, you know, it was work, but it was it was almost a vacation all the time. So uh, anyway, now I'm an airline pilot. I love it. It's the greatest job ever. So uh, there's a submarine base up in there. Yeah, then. so those big buildings that look like hangars on the yeah. water, those are subs, sub bases. Oh. And then there's an old fort. There's a one, two, three, I guess a six-sided fort right there. You know, we're just north of uh, St. Augustine, which is the oldest city in America. The thing about off-airport operations is that they, you know, you can land a runway ten times in a row on ten different days, and it can be different every single time. So. All right. I'll there. put the gear down, we'll come down and do a little pass. So. Okay. Caution. Terrain. Terrain. Her up. Caution. Terrain. Terrain. So it does look like there's two horses. Yeah, kind of right on the runway. runway. Yep, right on the runway, so that's why we got to buzz it. Do not see any other airplanes or anything, so get down right yeah. on them. And these are wild? Yep, completely wild. Is that low enough? Yep, should be. Did the horses move? Um. Yeah, but they're still close. Let's give them... Let's just go this back, just yeah, just across them over the top. So they're just these ones over here, yep. right? I don't see any other ones. Yep. So it looks, yeah, it's just those. Yes, there's those couple over there. Two. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Okay, they're still kind of. Right there, I think. Should we do one more? That was a bird. So they're still just right there to the left of the runway, right? Yeah. So get down and get okay. on the bald eagle. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is annoying. Still there? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well we can do it again. Oh, they're good. They're getting the truck now. They're still just right there on yeah. the runway. Yeah, I know. Should we let them get him with the truck and we? Well, just... we can. Should we help? Yeah, let's help. <laughs> <laughs> it can't hurt. <laughs> Get him. 
Try to put the gear down. Um, What's the gear speed on this? 153. Wow. And the first really to use it. So yeah, you can really use it. Come down real fast. All right, looks like they're moving. The truck is gone. Yeah, the truck's off to the left. But are those little spots just at sort of like that kind of intersection with that other path? Are those still horses there? Right now, I think they're bushes. But yeah, I think so. Can't be too careful about it. Yep, all horses are clear. Nice. Right. That's fun. Yeah. That was awesome. I've never landed at a uh, uncharted grass strip on a private island before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the live. Welcoming party. So my grandparents are here as well. So I awesome. they don't know I'm coming. So it's a little surprise. <laughs> <laughs> So this is Cumberland Island. Uh, a lot of interesting history here. It was, uh, you know, obviously first it was like Native American land, then it was a uh, cotton plantation owned by Stafford, who sold it to the Carnegies in the 1880s, and uh, since has become mostly a national park, and now there's just a little bit of private inholdings here and there. So, like the airport is private property, uh, the house here is private property, and then there's a few other uh, residents as well. So it's, you know, it's, it's private, you can't just come and fly in. Uh, you can actually rent the house though, and if you rent the house then you can fly in uh, and you have to get permission, but it's a really, really interesting little place. Go check it out. And so we just drove over to the Cumberland Island National Seashore, which is just pretty cool. Like there's nothing out here, it's not developed. It's just beach and water and horses and seashells and maybe a couple of alligators here and there. It's, it's pretty awesome. This is just awesome, like it's such a cool little place. Uh, I'm so glad I got to come in here. Uh, again, like this is a private airport, so you, you can't just come here and, and do this, but it's, to do, if you rent the house, you can. Um, but yeah, it's just an awesome little place. I'm so, it's so cool to be here. So next we're going towards EQ1, place up in North Carolina, apparently with good barbecue. Bobby's dad, Bob, is uh, clearing horses off the runway for me. And so we'll get down there and hopefully just have a nice horse-free runway to take off on. One thing is there's horse poop everywhere out here. I'm trying to avoid as much of it as I can so I don't just cover the plane in Okay, so controls are free and correct, instruments are good, everything is in the green. We're configured for takeoff. Okay, got 
that open, props pull forward. Mixture's good. That was awesome. Thank you uh, Warning. for Terrain. letting me do this. Terrain. Now on to barbecue. Should be about two hours. That was just pure awesome. At Moore County, just a few miles away, it's shown 240 at 11, gust 20. That's almost a direct left crosswind for runway 31 at uh, Gilliam McConnell, where we're going. Here we got traffic about seven miles at our two o'clock turn below. I almost wonder if that's Chris heading over to uh, BQ1. Good evening, kind of traffic, Bonanza 7 Hotel Pomp at 6 to the southwest, gonna be uh, left base runway 31. Good evening, McConnell. Good McConnell traffic, set to 43 Hotel is three miles, gonna left base for 31. Good McConnell. Matt. Hey. Hey, it's me, uh, David Chris, we're heading there too. Hopefully we're getting How far out are you? We are 5.0 out. I got you in now. So there's the airport right down in there, and there they are on the uh, final. Yes, yeah, so this is going to be a fun approach. You got and a tree is just right on the approach end there. We'll come right down over. That'll be good. It's a fun one, Matt. Good evening, McConnell. Traffic beneath the 7 and telephone. Final runway 31. Good evening, McConnell. Okay, got some nice gusts. We just went from 75 knots to 85. Just want to keep this glide path real good here. Traffic, 12 o'clock, low, less than one mile. That was a fun one. Yeah, it is. Carthage, North Carolina, Gilliam McConnell Airport, and we're gonna go check out Pick and Pig. So, today has been pretty epic. Yeah. I had lunch in Spruce Creek. I chased uh, wild horses off of a grass strip in Georgia, and now I'm here at Pick and Pig in uh, Carthage, North Carolina. I'm gonna have a large barbecue brisket plate. Yeah. Cornbread muffin. Okay, wait, so what, what about the bread? And then two other sides. French fries, coleslaw. We're out of applesauce. French fries and coleslaw. But how it's spicy is that? How can you get it on the it. side? It's some regular butter with it too. Here you go, the famous pick and pig barbecue brisket plate. the Coke cake, which is like condensed Coke Coca-Cola in cake form. It's pretty good. Just missing some Oreos. And uh, then I also got the chocolate pie because I'm just really hungry and it's all really good. It's really rich, but it's really good. Awesome lighting, awesome food, mm -hmm. awesome airport. So what's the verdict on Pick and Pig? 10 out of 10 would recommend. Definitely come here and check it out. BQ1. Just had an awesome little dinner here with Chris and Dave at uh, here in Carthage at 
BQ1, got some nice barbecue. And uh, now I'm gonna head over to Gray's Creek for, for some fuel, that's where Dave instructs. Good. Warning. Terrain. This runway we're going to is 30 feet wide. So we should have um, nine feet on either side, nine feet of wiggle room before we go off the runway. That'll be fun. Yeah, Grays Creek traffic, Bonanza 7 Hotel Pump, about a uh, mile and a half final, Grays Creek. Didn't need them though. Traffic, 12 o'clock. Same altitude, zero miles. Welcome to Is this the fuel uh, right down on the end? Yeah. Got some fuel here at, at Gray's Creek. Awesome little airport. The only thing that's paved is the runway, which is just so cool. And uh, now it's back to Boston, but three and a half hours. Gray's Creek traffic, Bonanza 7 Hotel Pompas, departing runway 35, Gray's Creek. Okay, everything's looking good. Airspeed's alive. I'm gonna let it build to about 70, 75. Looks good, we got plenty of runway left. There we go, pitch for VX. And we will not bust the airspace here. November 7 Hotel Papa, radar contact, six miles east of the Grays Creek Airport, climbing out of 1,200, clear to the Lima Whiskey Mike Airport via direct, climb and maintain 5,000. Okay, cool. So we are IFR now, and for now we're just put direct. I'm sure that's going to change. There's some potential for icing as we get up into New England, but uh, we'll just keep an eye on everything, see how it goes. Yeah, awesome night to go flying. November 7, Hotel Papa, contact Seymour Johnson, approach on 123.7, have a good trip. Okay, we're gonna make a call up to Seymour Johnson, 500 miles until Lawrence. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Chris is you know, awesome, check out his content. Here already, he's a flight instructor, makes some really cool Instagram and YouTube stuff. And then Dave is also a, he's an instructor, uh, he's done a lot of stuff. Used to be in the uh, Golden Knights, the, Army parachute team. All kinds of really cool stuff. Great guys. It looks like there's a little bit of weather that was up here around the New England area. Just kind of moving out. 
Fernando, 367 Hotel Pop, I have an amendment to your route advice, ready to copy. I knew that was coming. Clear to the Kilo Lima Whiskey Mike Air Provide Direct, JFK Victor 229, Hartford, Hartford 053, Radial Dream Direct, maintain 5000, Fernando, 367 Hotel Pop. Fernando, 367 Hotel Pop, read that correct. Now let's see what the MEA is like along that route. But yeah, really, just, just 2000 the whole way, basically. So just like this, when we just got some snow, but we're not actually in the clouds, there's really no worry about icing. It's uh, when we end up in the clouds that there's supposed to be some concern. But so far, we're not getting anything. Atlantic City up ahead is calling it broken 7,000. Number 7, Hotel Papa, climb, maintain 7,000. 7,000, Manhattan, the 367 Hotel Papa. Blue 609, turn left heading 09 or 09, maintain 1,000. see if this works. Left turn heading 090 up to 1, 2, 12,000, Jet Blue 609. Seven Hotel Papa, direct Bridgeport. Uh, direct Bridgeport, seven pop, and uh, we're getting light rhyme. Can we get 8,000? Seven Hotel Papa, from Rip Climb, maintain 8,000. 8,000, seven pop, thank you. So we did finally start getting some icing here. American 184, turn uh, left, heading we'll on 120. Yeah, we just got a little light rhyme there, but we got out of it. Also important to remember that you can have, you can be flying in the clouds below freezing, get no ice in one spot, and then get just a little bit further like we did and start getting some light to moderate ice. So you always got to have an, an out, multiple options with icing. I've heard 7 Papa, we're getting some light rhyme. Could we get uh, 9,000? Bananza 7 Hotel Papa, climb and maintain 9,000. 9,000, Bananza 7 Hotel Papa. Actually, I feel like we're just about on top. If we don't get there soon, though, I'm just going to make a 180 so that we're out of this, even as we climb. Yeah, so we got a little bit more ice here. But not bad on the wing. Okay, well, we're about 23 miles out. That's pretty much it. It's been an epic trip. I'm so happy to get to bring you guys along and just show you some of these awesome, awesome airports. The stuff you can do with an airplane is amazing. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like, hit subscribe if you aren't already. Press the little bell so you get notifications whenever there's a new video. And I, I really couldn't do all of this without Patreon. Check out the link in the description. Tons of awesome rewards there. So the window is all gone. It looks like it's all gone on the wings too. Maybe just a tiny little bit. It's probably some on the GoPro.